Sahabat sahabat to all of us here. We praise God for his love and his guidance. We can gather together here to worship him on this beautiful Sabbath day. And before we start our uh, Sabbath school program, we will sing a song from SDA hymnal number 469, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. For the next song, Adventure number 428, Sweet By and By. There's a land that is fairer than thee, and by faith we can see the fire. For the Father waits over the way To prepare us a dwelling place there In the sweet by and by We shall meet on the beautiful shore In the sweet by and by We shall meet on the beautiful shore We shall see the beautiful star, the melodious songs of the blessed, and our spirits shall sorrow no more, not aside for the blessings of rest, in the sweet by and by, we shall meet on the beautiful star, in the sweet Meet on the beautiful shore to our bountiful Father above. We will offer a tribute of praise for the glorious gift of His love and the blessings that hallow our day. 
found a beautiful song. Yes. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Once again, good morning and happy Sabbath. God is good and all the time. We would like to thank you for the opportunity that uh, that you given uh, that had given to us in the Sabbath days. Uh, so we are uh, Paduan Suara Mahasiswa Universitas Advent Indonesia will serving you in the Sabbath. Um, uh, we thank the Lord for His abundance and providence given to us, so we can gather together in here worship the Lord. So. Let's shake our neighboring hand and with the best smile we say happy sabbath. Yeah, happy sabbath. So, uh, be uh, before we continue our sabbath school program, let's invite the presence of the Holy Spirit uh, to dwell among us through the silent prayer. Now I will read the participant who will go into serving you in this Sabbath school program. As the song leader, uh, led by Friska, pianist by Richan, and our opening song from SDA hymnal number 341, To God, to God Be the Glory. And opening prayer will be led by Liana. Special song will be delivered by Paduan Suara Mahasiswa. And we will see the mission through the video. And our closing song taken from SDA hymnal number 430, Joy By and By. And let's praise the Lord of, from the opening song number 341 to God be the glory. SDA hymnal number 341, to God be the glory, shall we rise? Our memory verse for this Sabbath day is taken from Genesis 11, verse 2. Therefore, its name is called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there the Lord carted them aboard over face of all the, of all the earth. Let me pray. Our Heavenly Father in heaven, thank you for your blessing for us until this beautiful time. Now we will start our... Sabbath school program, please bless us. Give us your Holy Spirit so we can feel your presence here. We surrender our life into your hands because we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we will hear the song of praise by Paduan Suara Mahasiswa Universitas Advent Indonesia. Happy Sabbath to all of us. It's good to be here um, at the end of uh, our semester. And this is our last Sabbath in English Church before we're going to meet next semester in August. Uh, 
this Sabbath, the first song that the university choir is going to sing entitled Dare to Stand. This is one of our theme songs uh, that encourage young people to dare to stand for the truth. And just like our fathers have give, uh, uh, has given us an example how they are uh, um, stay to the truth until the end of their life. Dare to stand.
now we will see the mission through the video. One of Jesus' most memorable miracles. was feeding thousands of people in need of food. A church in Kansas City in the middle of the United States has been following Jesus' example of feeding the multitudes. So far this year, we've served about 13,500 families. That equates to about 53,000 people when you add up the people in those families. The New Haven Church opens its parking lot every Tuesday for food distribution. Cars line the street and wrap around the church to wait for the volunteers to fill the back of the cars with groceries and even baby supplies. All this is accomplished in partnership with other organizations in the community. They work together to help families in need. You know, from 10 to 11 for one hour we serve, um, you know, and we did probably about uh, 300 families today and uh, probably about 1,200 to 1,500 uh, clients that we served. I'd say we probably do anywhere from 80 to a little over $100 worth of groceries when they come through and we put it in the back of their trunks. Today is not just any other distribution day. The church is celebrating their one millionth pound of food donated for the year. Pastor Mark is thanking the team by grilling vegetarian burgers for them to enjoy. At the end of June, we hit one million pounds of food that we served, you know. Here in 2021, we're definitely on pace to do over two million pounds. So we just took a little time to celebrate that. We were thanking the volunteers that were there with some uh, vegetarian burgers with caramelized barbecue on it. And uh, so yeah, it was a good celebration just to thank the, the volunteers for all their work. We couldn't have done it without them. It's not only about the amount of food served, but more importantly, the lives they are able to impact. Another family said they were asking for prayer because they were going to be evicted from their home in a couple of weeks. It reminded me that we're serving people right that are really on the edge of homelessness. This food pantry in Kansas City has grown to serve many families each week, and they say their growth strategy is simple. The more we pray, the more people God brings here. And so I would say if you want to start a pantry like this, start praying for every single person that comes through there. And as you pray for those people, God will send you more who he knows needs prayer. And it will grow and grow and grow because that is what has happened to us. From humble beginnings, this church has fed hundreds of thousands of people over the last few years. Please pray for the team in Kansas City, as well as others around the world who are continually seeking ways to serve their communities with love. Now? Now we will collect the offering with music.
as we pray. Dear God, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this beautiful Sabbath day. So we can gather together and here worship you. Lord, we have to uh, collect our offering. Please bless this uh, offering so it can be useful for uh, people who need Thank you, Lord. Forgive all our sins in the name of Jesus Christ, our personal Savior. Amen. So we will we will discuss Sabbath school, and our discussion group will be divided into five groups. Thank you. Uh, lead this discussion so all of us right all of us by my left my right have to participate in this discussion of our sabbath school lesson all right um let's open our sabbath school lesson lesson number what number number five it's about all nations and Babel, right let us read the memory text it, it's taken from genesis chapter 11 verse 9 it says about, therefore, its name is called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there, the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. At the beginning of our Sabbath school lesson in this quarter, we learned that the first, we learned how God created this earth beautiful right perfect god saw everything that god has created 
that was very, very good. But as the time goes around, because of the human uh, choice, they fall into sin and they sin, right? As the penalty of sin is death. But God has given a promise in Genesis chapter 3, verse, verse, uh, verse 15, that he will come and what? And redeem the human kind. And also in the, the next lesson, we will learn that about Cain and his legacy, about, you know, about the flood. But this time, we got a new story about Babel and all nation around its its Babel, right? As we see the memory text here, it explains about that there is a story we are going to learn right now that you know, one of the common story we already have known, right? So it's about Babel. So in, in the first paragraph here, I explain about Babel. It says that after the flood, the biblical account shifts from the focus on the single individual, Noah, to his three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The particular attention on Ham, right? The first one. Especially for Ham, the father of Canaan. In Genesis, you can read in Genesis chapter 10, verse 6 and 15 introduces the idea of Canaan, the promised land, Genesis chapter 12, verse 5, and anticipation of Abraham, whose blessing will go to all nations. So all this story we have learned before is focusing only to Jesus, right? From the first parents of Adam and Eve until, you know, if you read in Matthew, in this lesson we will read in Matthew chapter 1, it, it's all just point to Jesus alone, right? The plan of salvation. And let us open our uh, Sunday lesson. Before we go into Sunday lesson, maybe there any addition from all of you? I give this time to you guys. Anyone would like to tell something, sharing something, before we go into our, sun, uh, our Sunday lesson? All right, I have there is no yet. We'll uh, continue to Sunday lesson. It is about the curse of Ham. Let us open our Bible in you know Genesis chapter nine, verse eighteen. Genesis chapter nine. Wait, hold on. Genesis chapter nine, verse eighteen to twenty-seven. We are not going to read it, all of that, but uh, there are some of the verses I'm going to show you. In Genesis chapter 9, verse 18. Right. All right, I'm going to read the verse 18. Now the sons of Noah who went out of the ark were Sam, Ham, and Japheth. And Ham was the father of Canaan. These three were the sons of Noah, and from these the whole earth was populated. And Noah began to be a farmer, and he planted a, a vineyard. Then they drank of the wine and was drunk, and became uncovered in his hand. Right? And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. But Sam and Japheth took a garment, laid it on both their shoulders, and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. Their faces were torn away, and they did not see their father's nakedness. So the flood, you know, as the as the family of Noah is, and then his three sons. But here is some. Uh, there is a story explained about about that Noah was drunk. You know, the first uh, person that was drunk, right, is Noah. 
But when Ham, one of his son, when Ham saw Noah drunk, what did Ham do unto his father? Did he cover his father or not? Not right. No. How about the the two of Noah's son? Did they cover Noah or not? They covered Noah. But the other side, for especially for Ham, instead of cover his father with a garment, he just looked unto his father and didn't do anything, do nothing. Right? Just just go outside and like gossiping about his father, whispering to anyone, hey, my father's nakedness and laying up on the ground. He didn't do anything, right? What we get from his story is, we live in the world right now is full of like the children are not respect unto their unto their father mother. There are so many things happen around us right now that children are not you know are not respect unto their father and mother. That's happened not only in our modern world. They happen after the flood, right? So it happened until right now. Okay, is there any question? You want to ask him or any addition, guys? Come on. Just speak up. Daniel, not yet. Wilson, want to share something? Not yet. Richard. That confused me because I think uh, Ham cannot cover his father because he cannot he cannot do that himself. But he he, he tell his brother to maybe help help him to help his brother. Dia eh, bisa bikin sendiri. Jadi dia minta butuh uh, abang-abangnya buat bantu dia. Mungkin I'm sorry. Can see you? Right. Oh maybe. All right, guys. Okay, guys. Uh, I heard from Richan before that Ham he want looking for help, right? So he cannot do it by him by himself. Is it right? Or is there any response from you? Something. I think when he tell to his brother, he doing something, but he didn't cover his fault too. But when he do, uh, tell to his brother, I think he doing something. Oh. All right, just yeah. When Ham go aside and tell his brother, he think that that the thing apa he can do yeah. Nah, jadi itu yang hal dia bisa lakukan. But as we read our uh, uh, our chapter here, I just want to read. Uh, continue to read this one. And the the first twenty two. And Ham, the father of Ken, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. But Sam and Japheth took a garment, laid it on both their shoulders, and went backward and covered the nakedness of his father. They fathered. Their faces were turned away, and they did not see their father's nakedness. So Noah, in, in verse 24, So Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done to him. And he said, Cursed, what? Be Canaan a servant of servants. He shall be to his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Sam, and may Canaan be his servant. May God enlarge Javits, and may he dwell in the tent of Sam, and may Canaan be his what? His servant. We see here, it is like, you know, Noah was angry to him, right? 
same thing that was that he did to his father to to go outside and tell his brothers that was good for him, right? That's the thing that he can do. But the other side, on the side, on the other hand, when Noah woke up, he what? First, he angry with him. What's wrong with this, right? Anyone would like to tell what's going on is between this father and their three and his three sons? Is it related to righteousness by faith and righteousness by work? <laughs> no, just anyone would like to share with us what's wrong with this? In in the mind of Ham, that was the thing that he can do. But the other side, Noah was what angry was he cursed. His son Ham, right? Is there something happened here? Or anyone would like to tell us? The issue is more than about respect. We have talked that you have mentioned that respect to one parent, and he think uh, Ham is not respect to him. Yeah, in Exodus twenty. It's, it, it's about respect, respect to parents. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Gat. Did he? Hey, so, so, uh, Ham wasn't respect his father. You know, in my opinion, you know, uh, when Ham saw his father lay on the ground and he didn't do anything, I don't know what's going on with him, but, you know, his father was drunk and he didn't take care of him. He just saw and go outside and tell. Uh, what I got from this point is, you know, uh, you know, Ham was, I think Ham can do it. Ham can do it by himself, right? Just cover it up his father with the garment, but he didn't do it. The, the the lesson we can get here, thank you before that the respect he didn't respect his father. I just I just want to share uh, the lesson that I got from this story is, you know when uh, his father lay down. The thing that we have to learn from his story is we have to respect, even though our you know our father mother mad at us, even though they are still our our parents right. Even though they are, you know, in the in the eye of public, they are bad. But as as our, you know, as as the son, as the daughter, we have to help them, whatever the condition is, right? That's our responsibility. That that our responsibility. We have to do it. Okay. Maybe you guys want to tell something. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> This is my own perspective. I don't know if it's in the Bible or it's in the spirit of prophecy. Uh, does anyone remember about when Adam and Eve fell, sin? What happened to them? Naked. So nakedness is uh, a big picture of uh, a curse because of sin. So when, when Noah got drunk and he was naked, and that's why... Noah was very angry to his son Ham because naked represents sin. <clears throat> because before Adam and Eve fell, they have the garment of what? The glory of God. So nakedness is representing the sin. It's very graceful. Yeah? It's shame, embarrassing. So that's why uh, Noah is very angry. He's uh, furious to his younger son, Ham. But despite that, as sons and daughters, by the commandments of God, respect your parents, obey your parents. That's a big picture on the last days. Probably it's not about naked, but we are naked because of what now? We are naked because we are not. We are sinners. The, the wage of sin are death. So what clothes, what garment that we, use, that we have to use today as a Christians? What garment? Represents of the, the days of Noah, or the garment of what? The garment of 
Jesus. Jesus put the garment. He is the garment of our life as a Christian. So we are now naked. In spiritual perspective, we are naked as well. So literally, when Noah is naked, he's showing us, he's showing his sons, particularly his ham, that naked represents sin. And this go fast forward in the last days. That's my opinion. I don't know if it's in the Bible or not, or it's in the uh, spirit of prophecy. Thanks a lot, sir, for the... All right, thank you. Okay, I think it's, it's already clear. So let us just move to our, uh, our Monday lesson. Okay, anyone would like to lead us in this Monday lesson? It's about the Genesis genealogy. Okay, anyone would like? Not only me, guys. Hey, right, come on. We have to take participate. Even though one sentence or two more, it's okay. Anyone? In our Monday lesson. Maybe from my right side here. In Monday lesson about Genesis genealogy. No? All right, okay, uh, I think I'm gonna continue. All right, it's here uh, in Bahasa, it's about Silsilah ke Kejadian, in English, Genesis Genealogy. Okay, you know, I once uh, when I read my Bible in, you know, especially in the in the Matthew chapter one, it's about the genealogy of what? Uh, of, of Jesus. Explain about after this one, this one, after Noah, uh, in this one. It's, it's very detailed, right? So, what is the purpose that God wants to write all the name of like, you know, in the Bible of, of number in the, the apa ya? Uh, kita bilang ulangan. There are a lot of names, right? There are a lot of names there. And my question is, why did God want us to know their name? Right? Why? Is there something God wants to tell us about, you know, behind of the name of genealogy that anyone would like to answer the question? Why? What's the purpose of a lot of the name that God, uh, God wrote in the Bible, right? I can say uh, God wrote because, you know, God inspired a human to wrote, to, to wrote that in the Bible. It's written on our Sabbath school lesson. Anyone would like to share with us what lesson we can, what is the purpose of this genealogy in the Bible? You can read in Luke chapter 3, verse 23 until uh, 38 and Genesis 10. Anyone? What's the purpose of this genealogy in the Bible? Is there something God wants to teach us about this genealogy? Anyone? All right. Uh, one thing, obviously, God wants us to multiply, to spread around, uh, scatter around the world. So God wants us to multiply. But the prophecy says that there's a the line of the messianic prophecy. So we need to know the family tree up until when Jesus was born. So we know we need to know the family tree, the messianic prophecy. So that's why we need to know all the genealogy from Adam uh, uh, way down to Abraham um, up until David and then Jesus. I think we need to know that because we need to know the family tree. But we need, uh, obviously, God wants us to, to multiply. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. We have to know that because it is like connected with, uh, with Jesus Christ, right? When he came to this, this earth. Okay, anyone? Daniel? Okay, there's no one anymore. Okay, I'm, I think, guys, it's written in the Sabbath lesson. And here it says that the first uh, one, the reason why the biblical genealogy has three functions, right? Three functions. The first one.
The first one, South Mame. The first one, it says that it emphasizes the historical nature of the biblical events, which are related to the real people who lived and died and whose days are preciously numbered. The second one, it demonstrates the continuity from the an antiquity to contemporary time of the writer, establishing a clear link with the past to the present. And the last one, the third one, it reminds us of human fragility and of the tragic effect of sin's curse and its deadly results on all the generations and that have followed. So one of the reasons why that God wants us to know the genealogy of the Bible is, you know, you know, you know God, our God is God of really, really detail of something, right? He want to explain to us that, you know, the Bible, so many people out there believe that the Bible is just a book of fiction. It's not real, but here, God wants us give us uh, something to to know that they, the people before the flood and after the flood, that the fall of sin, that was real happened. It explained the age of the, the person, right? When did they die until, until in, in every place God explained all of that in the Bible. It's how the tale or God is, right? So that's when, when I think the reason why that God wants us to know the genealogy of the Bible. And here the third one re really uh, I explain it about it reminds us of human fragility and of the tragic effect of sin course and its deadly results on all the generation and that have followed. In the book of Exodus, so many uh, rebellion from Israelite nation and God wants us to know that how deadly sin is when they reject, when they rebel against God, and the penalty is what? Death. That's, I think that's what I got from the Sabbath school lesson in this Monday lesson. Okay. Uh, is there any question about our Monday lesson before we continue because our time is limited? Okay, if there's no yeah, okay, I'm going to continue to this the lesson. Okay, in this lesson, maybe anyone would like to share with us? Maybe Mom Judith want to tell us about that this the lesson. <laughs> no, no, you have one, uh, oh, one language. <laughs> one language, yeah. Maybe we can just ask question here. Okay, um, let's answer the question. The, the one in the, the lower part, maybe we can answer this one. Because one Bahasa, yeah? we, we all know that uh, God, in this time, in this topic, God uh, saw that people are getting into, become very wicked, right? So God uh, make, confuse them. But let's not make that God is a God of confusion. Let's not put into our mind that God is a God of confusion. He just want to scatter them so that they will not, uh, they will not proceed with their plans of uh, making one one wor world, yeah, one world or one order. But then there's a question here. Um, a famous secular French writer in the passenger said that the great pur purpose of humanity was to try to be God. What is it about us, starting with Eve in Eden, that gets drawn into this dangerous life? What do you think, uh, what do you think that this will lead us into dangerous life? If we have one language, one, um, one order, one system. What do you think is the reason why this will uh, lead us into a dangerous life? Is it dangerous to have one language? 
It depends. So I find it interesting about these lessons. Uh, it's obviously about rebellious. Yeah, how mankind rebel and rebel and rebel. And they just came out from the flood. And <clears throat> it's interesting that they use the, the same materials that Noah used for the ark. It is from, uh, let me see, wait, wait a second. They use bricks and asphalt. Noah was instructed to build the ark with bricks and asphalt. It, what does it do? It prevents water to come in into the ark. So they're building a tower that prevents water and flood. That's interesting for me. And then the second one about the, the, the question about one language. What is our one language today? This is, we are using one language today. The universal language. <laughs> English, right? We, all the world understand English. One day, what we mentioned before, ma'am, the one system, the one new world order, it also goes back to the Tower of Babel. You know I'm, I'm talking, right? The world wander after the, the beast, right? You need to know that. So, Babel, Babylon, and the system. English, I think, my perspective, they will use English as the one language to deceive the world. That's why the world wonder of the beast today. I think that's the, the, the one dangerous thing that you mentioned before. So, but depends. You can use English to what? To spread the good news to the world. We can use, uh, it's beyond borders, using the YouTube channel, the, the social media. So it depends. It's two sides of the sword. Oh. <laughs> it's me again. <laughs> uh, in other words, one order, one system doesn't mean if we are one, doesn't mean we are united, right? Okay? Because they said we have to have one. Uh, we'll be united, we'll follow one order, but I think, yeah, I, I agree with what you said, that it, the dangerous part is when the purpose of making one system, one order, is to be against the will of God, that's the danger uh, that will come into us. But if we have one purpose, one language, to praise and glorify God, I think um, that will be the the uh, that will not put us into danger. So, because we only have one Savior, there's only one way. So we talk about the word one. Okay. So in this um, chapter or in this uh, lesson, what I remember is that there is a purpose why God uh, confused the people at the time. Okay, there is a purpose. Of course, he doesn't like that people will, uh, it's like they will not obey him anymore. So that's his purpose, to be still united in um, glorifying God. Because uh, this tower uh, yeah, in Babel, this one is, apa ya? Tidak bagus, sudah nggak bagus, begitu. Not good. Oh, <laughs> very good, yeah, one, one language, yeah. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> you see. <laughs> okay. So um, I think that's what I can say with this uh, uh, lesson for Tuesday lesson. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, ma'am and sir. Tell us about the about the Tuesday lesson. Okay. Let us move to our next lesson in Wednesday lesson. It's about let us go down. Maybe from my right side here. When I'm sharing about the Wednesday lesson. Okay, read it first. Genesis. Okay. 
Yes, ma'am. Let's pray. Okay, let us open our Bible in Genesis chapter, Genesis chapter 11, verse, uh, verse 5 until 7. I'm going to read Genesis chapter uh, 11, verse uh, 5 until 7. It says that, But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of man had built. And the Lord said, Indeed, the people are one, and they all have one language. And this is what they began to do. And now, nothing that they pr propose to do will be withheld from them. And uh, verse 7, Come, let us go down and there, confuse their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. My question is, why did God do that, right? Did God worry that they aren't going to reach, uh, they're going to reach the, as high as possible? Or is there something that wants the purpose God did that? Did God worry that they are rich? Apakah Allah takut nanti mereka jangkau sampai ke surga atau bagaimana? Okay, Daniel. I speak in bahasa ya. That's okay. Okay, thank you. Jadi uh, jawaban yang saya temukan di sini, ketika saya membaca ayat ini mereka mengatakan, mari kita buat uh, menara pakai batu bata. Batu bata ini kan dari tanah liat ya. Mereka bakar supaya kuat. Itu yang menjadi dasarnya. Terus yang untuk uh, lemnya itu pakai ter. Kalau kita membayangkan kalau hujan, maka itu batu batanya itu akan cair. Lalu kalau panas, ternya itu akan cair. Time nah, reminder, our time, uh, five minutes left. So every leader can give the conclusion. Thank you. Once again, please to every leader can give the conclusion. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Brother Daniel. Brother Daniel told us that God is care for them. It's going to be danger for them, right? So in here, God didn't worry nothing, right? Our God is God of unreachable. We cannot reach God, heaven, no. We can't at all. But God care for them, even though they are rebellion against God. But the other side, in here, we learn that God is God of love. God still care for them, taking care for them. God will do what good for for us. Okay, because our time is uh, uh, almost waktu habis. Jadi, I'm going to ask each one of you to tell us about closing statement, the lesson we got here. Okay, from Richan. We have Uh, melalui pelajaran ini saya diingatkan untuk uh, selalu bergantung kepada Tuhan agar saya tidak meninggikan diri dan terlebih lagi uh, kita manusia nggak bisa untuk menyelamatkan diri kita sendiri hanya Tuhan yang mampu dan kalau kita lihat inisiatif Tuhan selalu untuk menyelamatkan kita God doing everything is for best for us Uh, I, uh, I want to share for the Bible, it's Genesis 11, verse 6, until 7. Then the Lord said, let us go down, and they confuse their language, so that they may not understand one. So the conclusion in Genesis 11 is believe in God's plan. 
Okay, so for me is uh, I think God always have plan for us and his plan is always the best for us. Uh, jadi dari saya apa? Lewat aja enggak sih? It, uh, we must uh, believe from the God promise for us. Uh, for me the conclusion is uh, I think God have his own purpose on doing something like uh, the curse of Ham and then The one language that he prayed, he have his own way to tell us that he love us with uh, with all his action. So whatever he do for us, he have his own plan for us because he love us. This is the conclusion in our Sabbath school lesson is <coughs> when human uh, in this world. All nation and all language is one because their ambition for make the same like a god from build the tower tower of Babylon. God came and God see and came down and make the dispersion. So <coughs> all human having the different language yes. so this is the so the the name is called Babel because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth and from that the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth we need to trust God's authority that God is in control and <clears throat> as a human we need to to have faith surrender do not rebel obey his commandments and although we are upon sins curse beyond that is blessings because we have uh, a savior his name is Jesus Christ just three words um, trust obey and please Thank you. Okay, shall we stand? And we, we, can I have Daniel closing prayer? Okay, let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you for your blessing for us. Uh, we will, uh, we will to listen as uh, Sabbath school lesson. Thank you, Lord. Uh, give us your Holy Spirit to understand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath for us. Thank you, sir, man. Friends.
thank you for your participation in our uh, Sabah School discussion. We hope that we can fill with a new Holy Spirit, with a new Holy Spirit. So, to close our Sabah School program, let's sing from our SDA hymnal number 430, Joy by and by. Shall we rise? Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for your blessing so far. We have finished the Sabbath School program and we will continue the ceremony. Let you bless our program until the end. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So this is the end of our, of our Sabbath School program. Thank you for your participation. May God bless us. Happy Sabbath to all of us. We thank to God because this Sabbath day we can worship and praise Him. Especially welcome to our visitor. Welcome to our guests. As we worship this Sabbath day. Sabbath, April 30, 2022. There are several announcements for this morning. The first announcement, our speaker today, Mr. Richard Simbolon, will share about the God's word this Sabbath day. And then the next announcement for the adventurer, they will meet 145 at Old Building 
and use type A. For Pathfinder, we'll meet 3 o'clock, but use offline in, offline in new academic building and use type C. For AY program, we will start at 3.30 and this program led by senior. For the midweek, May 4, 2022, in chapel, speaker by Pastor PJ Sinaga. For the Vesper, May 6, 2022, in chapel, speaker Mam Ani Hendrix. And for the next Sabbath, 7, May 7, 2022, we will combine in chapel. So next Sabbath, we will meet in chapel, not in this place. And there are announcements from Bhakti Wanita Advent. They have Meeting 3.30 in the house of Mr. Alex Nangolan. So, they invite from BWA 3.30 in the house of Mr. Alex Nangolan today. And another program do asubu from BWA. May 1, and then they will make 4.45 in the morning using uh, online. So let us worship today with joy and happiness. Especially we can prepare our heart. Let us bow head and we can pray. Dear Heavenly Father, at this moment, we want to prepare our mind and heart as we enter this program. May the Holy Spirit be with us, especially as we pray for our speaker, Mr. Richard Simbolon. So may you always give the Holy Spirit while he delivers the God's word. So the God's word will be give us many blessings so we can share to others. Dear Heavenly Father, bless also all the congregation and all the participants. Thank you God for your love. Forgive and cleanse our sins. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Call the participant. We sing our theme song. Open our eyes to it.
Happy Sabbath for all of us. Before we read our responsive reading, let's let's stand together. We will read our responsive reading from Ephesians 2, verse 4 until 7. I will read uh, verse 4 and 6, and congregation will read verse 5, and we are going to read verse 7 together. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, congregation. And had raised us, raised us up together, and met us is sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. When we might, receiving the riches of his grace and his kindness, brought us through Christ Jesus. As the opening song, as the hymnal number 577, in the heart of it. Let's kneel down and pray.
Good morning for our God. Thank you for your blessing from night until this day in our worship today. We thank you for your blessing from our activity until now. And we want to worship you in this worship. Bless our church, our university, and our our family, and all of our work in the next week but please forgive us for our all of our sins and we hope that in this worship you can bless us until the end of the day of the sabbath day thank you god for all your blessing in the name of jesus we pray Happy Sabbath. Our offering readings. Uh, the title is Emulate and Early God. Jeremiah 31, verse 35. This is what the Lord says He who appoints the sun to shine by day, who decrease the moon and, star, uh, and stars to shine by night, the Lord Almighty in His name. We worship with our resources in disciplined way because we emulate an ugly God. One striking features of God creation is it well ordered design. The daily, weekly, and monthly patterns speak loudly about the designer, creator, and sustainer of the universe. As believers, we define ourselves as being His image and God being our model. Therefore, those who aspire to be his clear and sharp image are indeed paying attention to this word. But everything should be done in a fitting and early way. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 40. Spontaneity should not be an excuse for an absence of order in worship and duty. A man was always complaining of people stealing his money. He even suspects his wife and children. One day, his good friend gave him some advice. If you vow to make a special gift to God, no one will touch your money. He agreed to make this vow. On payday, he cashed his check and hid his money. After a few days, he remembered his vow, but to his great disbelief, there was only one small bill left. He burst into a rage, shouting and cursing his wife and children. This time you have stolen God's money, and he will deal with you. His wife remained silent, wrote on a sheet of paper from top to bottom and add some numbers on the right. Then she gently pushed the paper toward her various, and his eye moved up and down through the list of items and numbers, and he dared not and not at one single word. No one had stolen his money. He was spending carelessly without any plan. When our finances are in mess, we can hardly enjoy a happy life, and it is difficult to honor God with a faithful 
get too tight and add quite offerings. Would you like to enjoy the quality of life that your divine fathers has meticulously? Exercise more discipline and order in the management of our God-given resources. This week, may we reflect the image of the orderly God that we serve through our tight and regular offerings so from us. Now we will collect our offerings. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, this Sabbath we honor you in praise and offerings. Please bless this offering to be useful for your work. God, please bless the full service until the end. We offer this prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen.
as your prophecies will be. And signs of the time, you're appearing in me. I can no more see the Father. Happy Sabbath to everyone. Okay. Um, I would like to ask someone he, to help me with the presentation. Before we start, I would like to uh, pray. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, this time we need the Holy Spirit. We want to understand your love in our lives, Lord. May with this understanding of the love of God can enable us to love others and to love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, I think everyone would wonder why the title is Love Story is being delivered on the month of May or uh, uh, April. Usually, this title uh, is uh, being brought on the month of February, the month of love, the month of my birthday. So... <laughs> Since I was born in February, 
I think I can bring the love story all the year round. So, uh, God is good, and all the time, let us make a little bit changes on this. And I say, oh, there's a, a lack. Okay. And I say, God, he changed good with love. Okay? God is love. And all the time, yeah, we need to realize that God is love all the time. Maybe in our lives, we think that bad things happen throughout our lives. But remember, God is good. Uh, God is love all the time. I don't know if the younger generation um, can relate to this poster. <laughs> uh, I, I couldn't tell myse myself as the older generation, but I think in, in my time, this is very popular, the story about Titanic. Yeah? Um, it's a love story about two young people who went into a ship, Titanic, a gigantic ship, and then... Um, uh, accident happened, and the, 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 the ship uh, sank, and then many people were dying at that time. Many people drawn to love story. Okay? Titanic was, is one of the biggest grossing movies of all time, with 2.2 billion revenue. Why? Because people are really interested in love story. Whenever I give a lecture in my class, I teach um, cost accounting, um, management accounting with Ma'am Judith also, financial management, all about money. Very hard to understand the formula. What is the formula of net present value, inter internal rate of return, and many things. What is cost, um, um, uh, full cost and full costing? One thing that I realized, whenever I put an analogy to the formula and bring that to the story of love, students will remember. Okay? About debit credit, okay? And then I say, remember, this is about love. How if you have this, and you have this, and you have this, and related to love, when you court a girl, or you court a, a guy, or things like that, they remember it very easily. So, give an analogy of love. People are attracted to love story. Mother Teresa once said, being unwanted, unloved, uncared for, forgotten by everybody, I think that is a much greater hunger a much greater poverty than the person who has nothing to eat. This is a very powerful message about love. Okay, um, I still can calm myself up to now because actually this is my first time to talk as a, a preacher since I came in 2011. I've never been on the stage since 2011. This is my very first time to deliver uh, a sermon. So I still cannot come myself. So no matter what, please bear with me because this is very in intimidating for me. But we hope that I could deliver the message of love because I believe that everyone is drawn to love. In my class, I need to learn the language of the students sometimes. Okay? One time, my students told me a term that I couldn't understand. He said, Sir, maybe, uh, I don't know the terms in English. I know the terms in English, but I don't know if they use this in English. I, I'm not sure. Maybe, Dia kena mental. I was wondering, what is mental? Kena mental. What is kena mental? I don't know. I know mental in English, but I don't know what is the meaning of kena mental. And they said it. 
all the time. And sometimes, oh, sir, when you answer me, uh, when you ask me, I couldn't answer because aku insecure. Another term, I know the term insecure in English, but I don't know what they meant with insecure and mental. But then after, uh, you know, uh, hearing that terms, I'm getting used with the terms actually. It's more into the problem with their psychology. So nowadays, many students in the class, if they're not kind of mental, they are insecure. Okay, so this kind of thing are prevalent in our lives nowadays. Stress, fear, insecure, panic, depression. Sometimes the students say, sir, because um, in the class sometimes I need one third of my class to be active in the class. That's the rules. One third of the class should be active, whether answering my questions or raising a questions to me. So sometimes I need to ask them with my laser, okay, please answer my question. Sir, sir panic attack, <laughs> another term. <laughs> sir, panic attack. So this kind of terminology is, uh, we heard this kind of terminology among the young people. I don't um, want to uh, discredit you with this, but this is the reality that you've been using in, in my class, this is my experience. Why this kind of thing is uh, common in our lives? Because many things that we've seen is uh, dragging us to that feelings, yeah, to that mental illness. That's the reason why even in 20, uh, 2003, okay, again, <laughs> uh, something that might be related to older generation, specifically uh, Black Eyed Peas released a hit song entitled Where is the Love? as the response to 9-11 and also the issues of terrorism, racism, gangs, crime, pollution, and many things. They asked, where is the love? They believe that there is no love in this world. That's the reason why we need to talk about love more often. Okay? We need to talk about love more often and express love more often. It says in Luke 21, 26, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Men's heart falling them for fear. That's what happened nowadays, especially after the COVID. Yeah, maybe we gain a little bit strength in our, in our, in our um, uh, mental, but actually we are falling into fear even deeper. Why? Because we are lacked of love. John, 1 John 4, 18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. So the answer is love. One reason why, it doesn't mean I've never been in the pulpit before, it doesn't mean that I've never been asked. I've been asked maybe one or twice, but I couldn't say yes. Because every time I talk, I realize, especially when it comes to the uh, word of God, I need to take it personally. I need to take, bring out my experience. Sometimes the experience is not something that I'm proud of. So before I'm able to open myself, I couldn't say yes to the invitation to share the word of God in the pulpit. So today, I was hoping not many people in this room, <laughs> but actually, uh, I think this is um, the time because many of the, 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 the choir uh, members have heard about this story. Okay, so I will tell a story uh, about my experience also. The reason why we need love, because physically, there are things that uh, happen when we don't have love. We have what we call oxytocin, the hormone of love. 
the hormone of love. These are hormones that makes us happy. But oxytocin, it's called, that's the reason why there's a, a cartoon character there with the love in the eye. It says um, it's the love, uh, the love hormone. Oxytocin is produced by our brain. I, I'm not a, um, how do you call it, a doctor or this is kind of new for me actually, but I hope we can get the message and someone who work with the health area can approve this or help me if there's something that is not correct with this. Okay, it's produced by the brain. It strengthens romantic relationship. It's not only for romantic relationship, but affects person's physical and psychological state. Hormone oxytocin is also called trust hormone. Yeah? And has been known to have potential to treat physical and mental problems. The good thing is, is oxytocin is always available at any time. It's good. It's always available at any time. It says that this hormone also can increase, can release fear and anxiety, and also increase feelings of optimism, confidence, and trust okay? that make people become more open. One time, I took a uh, Briggs personality test, and the result came out. I thought I was a extrovert, but it came, it came that I'm INFG, <laughs> one of the hardest uh, combination of, one of the rarest and the hardest combination to deal with people because I'm introvert. So I was shocked. Oh, this is the reason. Every time I in, I'm in the crowd, it's very hard for me to get more energy. It drains me out when I meet to, with a lot of people. So uh, it says, with oxytocin, we can be more open to people. Anti-inflammatory properties also can speed the wound healing, can relieve cramps, muscle aches and headaches, migraines, many things. Low level of oxytocin can be associated with depression, anxiety. And also, it says that uh, it related to digestive process, the di digestive process that's the reason why sometimes when I feel stressed, sometimes my stomach will react. So that's the reason why there's a connection between our stress with our, with our digestive uh, uh, part of body. So it says that it can improve digestive abilities and reduce inflammation in the intense time. So uh, there are a lot of, a lot of uh, benefit of the hormone of love. Can you imagine if you are lack of love? And our body cannot produce the hormone of love. There are many things that can happen to our body. Bad things happen to our body. Uh, like what I said before, I would like to open up a little bit about my experience. We have a dog, our beloved dog, uh, Mochi. Okay, this is Mochi. Uh, when uh, we first adopted her uh, with her beautiful mom, yeah, so this, uh, uh, are, at that time, they are the love of my life, yeah, <laughs> uh, with Mochi, because she passed away, actually, years ago. Um, one thing about Mochi, Mochi is very, uh, very playful, he, she didn't ca uh, scare of anything, usually people. She always wanted to know people, even though it was the first time she met that person. Okay? We were worried we want a dog that can be a guard also, but Mochi is not a guard at all. Even the stranger came to our house, she will greet him or her. So, well, it's, it's the, uh, the, the best thing that we have with Mochi. So in no time, many students, I can say a lot of students, knows Mochi. Mochi is even more famous than both of us, me and my wife. Okay? They will tell Mochi, Mochi, they don't even care who owns Mochi. As long as there is Mochi, 
They will. Because Mochi will roam around the campus and greet everyone. One day, she was kidnapped. We got a message. Please take care of your dog because we need to have something to do with the stray dog. We said, Mochi is not a stray dog. He has an, an, uh, um, an honor uh, owner. We own Mochi. But then we get the message at 8 p.m., uh, 8 a.m., we couldn't find Mochi anywhere. My wife was crying all the time, and then she put, because many of the students love Mochi, including the choir member, she put a, uh, a status in, the, in her WhatsApp, because Mochi, where are you? We miss you, Mochi. And then all of a sudden, within 24 hours, the campus was, was in, uh, how do you call that? In search of Mochi. There is a hashtag, save Mochi. Someone reported to the Department of Animal, uh, animal how do you call that? Animal, not shelter, animal something. And then we were, we were, we were called about, and then, because it's not 24 hours, we need to wait. Because we didn't report anything. Everyone is working for Mochi. Mochi was lost for three days. And the one who kidnapped Mochi was so scared because of this social media effect at that time. So silently, they leaked an information, where is Mochi? Three days after that, we found Mochi in a place that is um, so hurtful, if I could remember. She was so scared for three days. She couldn't eat when we uh, get her for days. So many people love Mochi at that time. We didn't do anything to find Mochi. Actually, the person said that actually Mochi was in line to be uh, murdered. But because she was uh, so uh, uh, friendly to the person who kidnapped, so she was put on the back of the line before she was murdered. But the story of love is so interesting. Many people love Mochi, and we are so grateful to have her in our life. Another story, love story, is the story of my grandmother. Um, she raised me for 22 years. My mom got a chicken pox when I was four months old, so she couldn't breastfeed me after that. So she handed me to my grandmother, and after that, I always stayed with my grandmother until I was 22 years old. I sleep with her even though my grandmother and then moved uh, uh, to Unai, I still sleep with my grandmother until 22 years old. So I love her so much. One story that I would like to tell, how big is the love of my grandmother? My grandmother has only one daughter, which is my mom. And my grandfather, I never had the chance to meet him. Uh, they say that he has these uh, skills to to uh, give medicine uh, to people at that time, but they, do, they didn't call him a doctor. So he has uh, quite um, a lot of money from this, his business. And then, but um, the family, because at that time I'm, I, I'm a Batak, a son is very, very um, important to continue the, uh, the lineage of the family. So at that time, the family said, no, you cannot just have one daughter. You have to remarry. So my grandpa one day went from the house and remarried and never came back. My grandma didn't have any work, so she has to sell the rice that stay in the house to continue his li her life with her only daughter, and then be leaving two of them in the house like that. 
when I was born, I didn't know that my mom has half siblings. One day, a man came to our house, and then he said, because in our house, there's always a lot of people. There are always a lot of uncle and aunties. So everyone is uncle and aunties in my house. At least five uncle, three aunties in my house all this time. So at that time, there's a man introduced was introduced to me as my uncle. And I said, okay, uncle, okay, what is so special with this uncle? And then times went by, and then my grandma said, this uncle is different. He is your half-brother, uh, your mom's half-brother. But I was so mad because I knew the story. I couldn't forgive my grandpa, uh, grandfather and the family. I hate them. I hated them so much at that time. And then my grandmother really uh, took care of my uncle. Not long after that, another uncle came. And then said, okay, uncle. And then my grandma said, this is also half-sibling of your mother. Huh? So how many of them, I said? We cannot forgive them. I don't like this uncle. Not long time after that, another uncle came. This is also half sibling of your mom. And they say, half brother, yeah? They're half brother, not, not step, yeah? They're half because they share the same father. So three of them stayed in our house, and my grandma really took care of them despite of the, the hurtful experience that happened with her in, in the past. My, mo my grandmother has a very big love, huge love. Even when she was about to die, she told me, Richard, don't hate your uncles and take care of them in their old age, as if you're taking care of your mother. She has a big love. I couldn't. Um, help myself to cry. That's the third reason why I, I don't really like to stand in the pulpit every time I saw my grandmother and I remember I couldn't help to be more emotional. Another love story is between me and the choir's members. I have two choirs now. Not having two choirs, but I have in my responsibility two choirs now. One of them is Paduan Suara Mahasiswa and Unai Church Choir. They are combined at this time, so they are here. I, I couldn't get the picture of, of, of Unai Church Choir, but since they are now combined, so one picture can accommodate that. So um, there are things that I and my wife really grateful for, even though up to now um, we are still praying for uh, a child or children in our family, but God has sent us a lot of children. I have more than 40 or 50 children every semester. And since I came to UNAI 2011, starting 2012, I started to, uh, to uh, direct the UNAI Church Choir. I think up to now I have more than 200 or almost 300 children in our care. And every at the end of the semester, they always tell us how much they love us. They send us texts. Sometimes in our birthday, even though we didn't remember our birthday, we couldn't, uh, you know, um, we don't have any social media, so we couldn't uh, announce any birthday to anyone. They always remember to call us and say, because they call us father and mother, dad and mommy, that happy birthday, we love you. Mommy, happy birthday, we love you. A love story. A very, very um, touching love story that we have. What is the ingredients of love? There are two things that we need to understand about love. The first is love and sacrifice. Is there love without sacrifice? No. Love between two people in order to survive always requires some sacrifice. Okay? We know the story, I think. Um, 
maybe you have seen this picture a lot of times. This is a story about a dog, Hachiko, who's been waiting for his master for nine years because his master went out one day to work and then never came back. But the dog always came to the train stations for nine years until the dog died. There's always sacrifice in love story. This is one of the pictures taken in the earthquake happened in China where a mother saved her daughter. Her daughter was down there wrapped in the cloth and then uh, she survived but the mother died um, because of the earthquake. This is a very uh, touching story about the love of a mom. Um, the love needs sacrifice. We cannot claim that we have love if we are not there to sacrifice something. Romeo and Juliet. Okay, this is a very, um, uh, I think this is all time, yeah? Not like the, the black eyed peas, not like the, the things that, I think Romeo and Juliet is close over the time up to now. People know when, whenever they heard Romeo and Juliet, okay? But what is the title actually with Romeo and Juliet? We know that. They are, yeah, in the story, they died. Both of them died. The story, the title, original title is The Most Excellent and Lamentable Tragedy of Romeo and Julian. So lamentable, it means it's very sad. It's worth crying for, okay? So love and sacrifice is something that it comes together. John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whatsoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Love needs sacrifice. The second one, the second ingredient is love and trust. Is there love without trust? It says that, Love cannot live where there is no trust. So where there, where is there is no trust, there is no love. Trust is very important. We uh, heard this term again in the classroom, yeah. Uh, especially when people say, "Ah, oh, Jaksel language," you know, Jaksel is Jakarta Selatan. It's in my class because. I'm young enough, so I need to understand their language. Sometimes I think even my generation to the younger generation, we are lost in translation. Yeah, we are lost in translation. Especially when our students are from Jaksel, <laughs> Jakarta Selatan, yeah, south of Jakarta. They have combined English and Bahasa and use it with their own term, trust issues. When a person has trouble trusting others due to betrayal and other personal reasons, or just lacking in trust due to an action or things the one on the receiving end are doing. So trust issues. Many people experience trust issues now. No matter how we try to, uh, to uh, alleviate, but trust issue is still there. We cannot hide. But for people of God, there should be no trust issue. I don't think uh, many of us uh, know about this picture, but I think the, the student from the, uh, the, the, the pastor might have seen this picture. This is the fight of Jacob. This is the time when he, Jacob has sent all of his flocks, his his servants and his wife and his children ahead of him to meet his brother Esau. At that time, Jacob was in depression. She was in fear, anxiety. She was so afraid that she know, he knows that he made a huge mistake that his brother might not be able to forgive him. So at that time, he made a little bit of strategy give an offering to his brother first and then to uh, 
uh, his, his, his children and wives to soften the heart of his brother. And at that time when he was alone, there was an angel. And some of the, 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 the writings say it was Jesus himself. It was God himself came to him. And what happened? They had a fight. But actually, the angel, God, didn't came to him to fight. But he was so depressed, he had a fear, so that every time um, she think about that, she think negatively about the surroundings, including the angel who came to him not to fight him, actually. Okay? Many times in our life, we couldn't see the love story. Because we are full of fear. We are full of anxiety. We are full of depressions. We are full of many things. We are full of trauma and many things. I know many people say it's normal. It's human being. But actually, we have to remember that our life story is love story. Love story doesn't have to have a beautiful scenes all the time. Love story needs sacrifice. Sometimes people died. Sometimes people being taken down. People say bad things about us and many things. So much hatred, but it never changed. The theme of our life is always love story. It's never been other than the love story. Our lives is a love story. But when tribulation comes upon us, how many of us, like Jacob, we think it's the hand of an enemy, and in the darkness we wrestle blindly until our strength is spent, and we find no comfort or deliverance. To Jacob, the divine touch at break day of day revealed the one with whom he had been contending, the angel of the covenant, and the weeping and helpless. He fell upon the breast of infinite love to receive the blessing for which his soul longed. So actually, God came to Jacob to show his love. But sometimes we see it in different ways. We think it's the hands of the enemy. We think our life is the punishment. We think our life is a waste. But actually, it's a love story. It's always been a love story. This is a story from the, uh, the uh, spirit of the prophecy. This is a love story of Jesus. And it says that at that time, Alan G. White was uh, sick, and then he got this, this uh, sight, sighting. I saw four angels who had a work to do on earth and were on their way to accomplish it. So uh, the word was the four winds, uh, was about to be open, and if it's open, and people will die. Okay, but Jesus said, Jesus was clothed with priestly garment. He gazed in pity on the remnant. Okay, they, he doesn't want them to be hurt. So he said, then raised his hands with a voice of deeply pity, cried. He said, My blood, Father, my blood, my blood. He begged for us to show how much he loved us, the remnant and human. Then I saw an exceeding bright light come from God who sat upon the great white throne and was shared all about Jesus. Then I saw an angel fly with a commission from Jesus, swiftly flying to the four angels who had a work to do in earth, in the earth, and waving something up and down in his hand and crying with a loud voice, hold, hold. Hold until the servants of God are sealed in their forehead. This is the story of love. Many of us may, might come from a broken family. The terminology of a broken family doesn't mean that you don't have, you have separate fathers. Many of these function family are now on earth, actually. But God help us together. No matter how bad is our situation, no matter how worse is our story compared to others, 
it's still a God, it's still a love story anyway. It never changed from the love story. And then Ellen G. White said, oh, what happened? And then he said that actually God is uh, asking uh, or, or, or uh, try to help us so that the remnant could have time for them uh, to save themselves and to see the love of God. What is your love story? There's no other than love story. That's the, the question is, what is love story? What is not, what is your, your horror story? It's always been, what is your love story? Even though we have made a lot of mistakes, even though we have uh, uh, come to the darkest time of our lives, even though we have a lot of problems now that we cannot solve, and we try to figure out what is the answer to these problems, remember at the end, it's always a love story. It's always a love story. And once again, I would like to ask you, God is love, and all the time, thank you, and may God bless us. I would like to ask uh, PSM to sing once, once again this song entitled uh, Laudate Dominum. It's in Latin. Uh, the, tit uh, the meaning is praise God, all you people. Praise God, all nations, because of his merciful love to human beings.
as the closing song let's stand up and sing from SCA hymnal to hymn number 579 Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for the blessings. We thank Thee for the Holy Spirit who has been guiding us throughout this uh, worship. Lord, makes us understand how great is Your love in our lives. So when we come out from this room, we can spread the love of God to others. Forgive our sin, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
on behalf Unai English Service Coordinator, I would say thank you so much for all of us to join the Sabbath day, especially for this program is the last day for this sem for this semester. We will continue our program next meeting on summer class. On summer class, and then we will have English service program. And there is one announcement from Adventist Affiliation Indonesia. Those who want to join, please come in chapel at 3 o'clock. So they have interview, those who want to join. And thank you so much. May bless in each one of us as we depart from this place. And let us share the blessing what we heard this Sabbath day. God bless us.